Hey y'all, Reaganite71 here back in the workshop. Been scroll sawing quite a bit. Got all those airplanes scrolled out that we started with a few episodes back. And today we're going to do some finishing. I'm going to show you how I like to finish products that I make on the scroll saw. All kinds of ways to finish. Mine is not the definitive way, but it's how I do it. And so I'm going to share that with you today. Once I'm all done scrolling out a project, what I like to do is bring it over to my staging area, or in this case, a <coughs> landing pad, and I just lay it all out to the side, and then I continue finishing my scroll work, and then once I'm done, I'll come over here and try to get any of the paper off. Of course, I'll get all of the packing tape that we use to, to do the project with. You do need to be careful with these fragile areas. You just take your finger and you kind of roll it right off. And a lot of times you're going to be left with paper left behind. And for the benefit of those that didn't see the last episode, I'm going to show you how to get this off. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate having to get price tags and stickers off of stuff at the store. With this paper, you could spend all day trying to fleck it off with your fingernails. There's a better way. It involves using mineral spirits. You just take a little bit, put it on a rag, Wipe it over, leave it for about 30 seconds or so, and this stuff will come right off as I'll show you here in just a sec. Now I've had the mineral spirits on here for about 30 seconds or so. Now watch this. This is just awesome. See that? None of that stuff. Nice, quick, easy. Now anything that's left behind after we've weakened the glue here, the sander is just going to eat right up. Now at this point, I'm just going to let this stuff dry off thoroughly before I start sanding. As a fret worker and a scroll sawer, there's nothing quite as bad as getting all the way through the project, all of your inside cuts done, and then getting it over to the sanding table and having it break because you're pressing down too hard. So when it comes to sanding your fret work, remember this, less is more. Now that we've got everything dried off from the mineral spirits, I'm just going to give everything a once over with a little palm sander. And it's just going to be a nice, easy once over. Nothing dramatic, nothing crazy, um, no bearing down on it. I just want to get it nice and smooth. Once I get one side done, I'll flip it over and give the back side a once over. If anything at all, I'm actually holding some of the weight of the palm sander off of the work. By the way, for those of you that didn't catch my last video, this is my sanding pad that we made. We just used some very soft, uh, kind of almost rubber-like tool chest drawer liner. And put a little couple of cleats down on, on a piece of plywood. It's totally removable and all of that. Underneath it, I've got a couple of, thanks to a viewer uh, recommendation, I cut up a few and put underneath it, and it won't even move on us that way. If you'd like to see how we made the sanding pad, just click on our description down below the video, or you can go to my blog at reaganite71.blogspot.com. I posted a link up there. It's also handy to have a hobby knife, sharp hobby knife. If you have some imperfections, you'll be able to get in and kind of clean it out with the old hobby knife. Now I've got everything sanded and put off to the side. I'm going to take an air compressor with a little air hose here. It hadn't been used in a while. And to get all the sand out of all of our inside cuts, I'm just going to blow it down. When you're doing this, this is where one of those air filters we made a few episodes back really come in handy because as the, uh, the fine particulate matter gets into the air, that filter will clear it right out. Now I've got a Rubbermaid container here and a little can of boiled linseed oil. I'm going to put about a quarter inch in the bottom of this deal. I've also got a really good lid for it so I can just seal it back up with the lid. But this is really good stuff, especially on oak, man. I love the way it makes oak look. It's just awesome. 
Now it's just a matter of taking our, our pieces, popping it in the wood, give it a flip. Since we have so much excess on here now, I can take the air compressor and blow it right back in the blow it right back in the box there. This is going to do a couple of things. It's going to get to all of the inside fretwork and seal it up. And man, does it make the wood grain pop. But you can get all of this stuff out of the nooks and crannies. And it also helps the uh, drying process because it gets a lot of that excess off. I've got a wire roll full of wire and what I've done is cut some pieces out and bent it up. And so now all I'm going to do is take my pieces and hang them from this and we'll go hang them from the rafters and let them dry out. If you don't have any rolled wire available, you can always get one of your wife's coat hangers and cut it down. Where's my hanger? Now I'm just going to let them sit overnight. In that time, they'll dry out. Boy, they're looking great though. Check out the wood grain on this, would you? I mean, it is just beautiful already. It is really, it's sealing up all of the wood all the way around it, and it's really raising that grain and making it look nice. Well, it's the next day, and everything is looking really, really good here. The pieces are all dried out and ready to go. I like to use cardboard when I finally put the sealer on. And what I do is I start with the back side of the wood. That way, if I get any run it runs or anything like that on the front side, I can clean it up, and then I'll finish with the front. But the nice thing about using the cardboard is that, well, it doesn't stick too badly to it. For whatever reason, uh, cardboard uh, works really good with this. And I use deft uh, semi-gloss to finish my pieces with. And so we'll go do that now. And when I start, I'm going to start off to the side, start the spray, and then work my way in. And I'm going at a low angle, like I said, to get it into the fretwork. Nice and steady. And I'll use my hands, and I'll just rotate the work around so that I can get it at every angle. The good thing about Deft is uh, it's dry to the touch in 20 minutes. So here in about 30 minutes, we'll be able to flip it over. Okay, it's been a half hour. I want you to see just how easy this stuff will lift off and flip over now by using this cardboard here. It doesn't stick to it. See that? See how easy that is there? We're just going to flip them right over and we're going to do the same thing to the other side and finish them off. Once again, low angles to get it inside the fretwork. And then we're going to come straight down and get the top finish. Well, that's about all there is to it when it comes to finishing fretwork projects. That's the way I do it anyway. I pretty much use this procedure on every fretwork project. It's a standardized process and I just go through it each and every time to get my pieces done. Now make sure you join me next time because I'm going to show you how to make this nice little fretwork basket. And I'm going to provide you the pattern and everything. We're going to do that the next time we get together. So until then, this is Reagan971 and we'll see you next time.